I am super duper excited about going to L&D. So I'm like struggling to open up the knot that I had tied so tightly earlier on. This is not working for me. I don't know why it's stressing me out. The resident was like going in and putting it, his hands were shaking. Good morning, everybody. What's up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Welcome back to another clinical vlog. Today, I went to labor and delivery and I am bringing you guys along with me as much as I can, sharing my experience with you guys and I hope you enjoy. the fit um you guys have seen this outfit before it's just like these blue scrubs ignore this my skin is really red um it's these blue scrubs from Eva Teresa the blue jogger pants and then this is just a warm-up jacket it has my name on the side so love that and then of course my compression socks full outfit is from um scrubs for them from uh Carlingwood Mall but I need to go grab my little lunch so if you guys know, I don't usually take like a big lunch with me. I have a big breakfast and then I take like a protein bar with me. And then when I come home, I have like an actual big lunch because we come home at around three. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, welcome back to another vlog. I feel like I haven't actually picked up my camera and talked to you guys yet this entire vlog. I'm just so disoriented every single clinical morning. I threw my hair in this hairstyle which definitely does not look flattering at all on camera but it's practical, it doesn't hurt my hair and keeps my hair back and out of my face. Ignore this, my skin is like really really red, I don't know what's happening. So today is my second last shift of clinical and today I'm going to be heading down to labor and delivery. I'm really really excited about that. can see we still have no driveway like still have no grass and then they made us like park on that side because they were working on the sidewalk she's slippery oh my god i literally hate when the street is like this it's like this slippery kind of coating i don't know it's like it snowed but then maybe it rained or something i hate when it's like this and i don't even have my winter boots because we misplaced them somewhere in the move. By the way, I had to park like up this hill and I don't even have my little car brush in here, I don't think. I have everything blaring pretty much on high heat. I wanted to show you guys, I got this cool jacket. I got it back in January, but I've lost a little bit more weight. And I wouldn't say weight, I have lost weight, but I've lost a lot of fat since then. So the jacket is kind of big on me now. Actually, it's like really big, but you know what guys? I, I, I really wanted like a long jacket like this, like one of those puffy kind of jackets, whatever, for like a couple years. But I was so skeptical. I was like, there's no way those are warm, but this is so warm and it's like long. So it feels like a nice little blanket and I just love it but I'm waiting for my car to warm up everything is on extra mega high and then we're gonna head over to Starbucks the Starbucks closest to my house which is still a couple kilometers out is opening like it opens at 5 30 in the morning on the weekdays which is so perfect for clinical so I'm just gonna go get my venti iced coffee usually I'll just bring my coffee up to the floor or I'll leave it in my car for a couple hours and at lunch I'll pop in and get it but because I'm going to labor and delivery today I don't know if there's gonna be a spot for me to put my coffee and I just don't want today to be the day that I experiment so I'll just go grab my coffee put it in here and yes I'm still gonna get an iced coffee today because I want to I literally want to and that's what I'm gonna do but yeah 6.03 a.m. Super excited. Now that I'm finally out of the house, I am super duper excited about going to L&D. I really, really wanted to go and that was like the one thing I said prior to starting this rotation was like usually I'm not super duper specific, but I want this. And you know, every single rotation, I think it's important that you mention to your instructors prior to starting the placement if there's anything you absolutely want to see. All the students get a chance to go to labor and delivery, but I just like emphasized it. So 
yeah, anyway, we're gonna go head out and I'm really, really hoping that we have a super good day today in the hospital. I'm not gonna vlog and drive this entire time. I'm just, I'm still in my neighborhood, but random little thing. One thing I love about this new neighborhood that I'm in is that the streets are like so wide. Given we're like not in like the main suburbs anymore and we're like kind of further out from everything, but the streets are so much wider and I love it because if any of y'all know me personally and you've been to my house, my old house, that one street entering into my neighborhood was so narrow. I just pulled over real quick. I got my little iced coffee drink. I get the same thing every single time in case anybody was wondering. And I know I can make this at home, but I don't care. I wanna get it from Starbucks. I finally got light ice. I always forget to say light ice, so hopefully that'll help it not get watered down on the car. You've arrived, destination is on your right. I just got here to the hospital and I don't know why, but like it's really full. Like there's a lot of people here. I parked, my parking is not good and it's really squished. So I don't know, but it's close to the door, you know? And if it like snows while I'm in there, I don't wanna have to walk the extra 50 meters in the snow. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna go fix my parking. This is not working for me. I don't know why it's stressing me out. I'll see you soon, buddy. Part of the video but when i sat down to review the footage and actually edit it i realized that i did a terrible job at it actually explaining what went down in the or and like my labor and delivery experience i was so tired and exhausted that i just felt like i left out so many things and since i can't vlog in the or and at clinical i still want this video to be of value for you guys so you guys can get an idea of what it's like going for a c-section and labor and delivery being in the or and all that type of stuff so with that being said i am now filming this a couple days later hopefully Hopefully I can still remember everything. But yeah, of course, quick disclaimer, I'm not talking about any patient identifying information. I'm literally just sharing this for educational purposes and so that you guys can have a little bit of insight of what it's like to go to labor and delivery. More specifically, CSE section. So first things first, I got there and I had to change into hospital scrubs. My clinical, we don't have to wear any like school scrubs or anything like that. We can wear whatever scrubs that we want. But when we're going into the OR, we have to wear hospital issued scrubs. So my instructor took me into the change room where they have this machine and she got out some scrubs for me. I went and I changed into those. They honestly weren't comfortable at all. Like there's no stretch to them and the waistbands are like really, really big. So you have to tie it really, really tight. And this is important. I tied it super tight so that they would stay up. But like I said, there's no stretch. So you have to be able to get the knot undone. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, so after I changed into my hospital scrubs, I went and I introduced myself to like the birthing unit nurse or like basically she did the triage for the patient and then she was also the one who admitted the patient to pack you after the C-section was done. But anyway, I went and I introduced myself to her and we looked over the patient's chart, found out all the information, you know, how many pregnancies and all that type of stuff. This patient had a previous C-section, so it made sense that we were just gonna continue with another C-section for this baby so the nurse and i went into the little triage room introduced ourselves and just took like a quick set of vitals on the mom and we basically just explained the rundown of everything and then yeah it was time to get the or prep so i had my little like, hair net for lack of better words most of the nurses there just wear scrub caps i obviously didn't have one so i threw one of those on and then i had to wear these like little covers on my shoes as well because i like wore my shoes in the parking lot and stuff like that so like for sanitary purposes and stuff like that for like sterile sterility and whatnot so i put those on and then we were all ready to go. So then we made our way into the OR, we made sure like everything was prepped and I'm gonna tell you everybody who was in the OR in a second, but at this point it was just 
me, two nurses, one was a scrub nurse, one was a circulating nurse, and then the nurse who brought the patient from triage to the OR. And then there was the anesthesiologist and the anesthesia resident. So what they did was the anesthesia resident and the anesthesiologist had the patient just sit on the exam table hunched over like this, kind of like holding a pillow, and her back was like this. And basically what they did was they did an ultrasound to find out where the epidural is gonna go. So the ultrasound took about like 10-ish minutes and then the resident went ahead and um, put in the epidural. So if I'm remembering this correctly and if I understood this correctly, they basically took this catheter and inserted it first into like the epidural area and then it was like this little super thin long needle that was going into the catheter and so this needle was so thin and when the resident was like going in and putting it his hands were shaking like so much it was like super duper like stressful specific like high pressure type of situation but he did great there was a little bit of blood but that was fine he emphasized to the mom if you feel a little bit of pressure or even a lot of pressure that's okay but the minute you start feeling like a sharp pain or any pain at all just let us know so that was that they put in the epidural and everything was fine and then i basically really had to go to the bathroom and i see before i went into the or i tried to go to the bathroom but there was somebody in the bathroom already in there so i was like whatever it's fine i, I can't do this right now so it's whatever but then i go in the or and they're like getting everything ready you know getting ready for the rest of the people to come in and i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry i have to go to the bathroom so i run out i go to the bathroom and i can't undo my pants because like i said there's no stretch to them and then you have to tie them really tight because the waistband is so big so i'm like struggling to open up the knot that i had tied so tightly earlier on and this is just like of course this would happen to me and i'm like trying to rush because i don't want to miss the c-section i want to be there for as much as i can so anyway go to the bathroom everything's fine eventually and then i walked in and i like ran in they're like no 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 no, you can't and i was like what and they're like okay we have our sterile field like we're setting it up right now just wait i waited while they set up the sterile field and then they told me i was clear to go i thought I stood kind of like the exam table was right here and then i was here so I had like a good view of everything. And then the OBGYN came in, the resident came in, the medical student came in. And then there was, of course, the circulating nurse, the scrub nurse, the nurse who admitted the patient from triage and who would also take her to um, PACU. And then there was a recess nurse. Basically, the recess nurses are called from NICU. I don't know if they're there for every single delivery or like what. And I think that was it. There was like 10 of us or something. And then, of course, the anesthesia team. I think that was like all of us. There was a lot. So yeah, they just basically went ahead. They did all the prep, everything like that. And then the surgeon came in, they did their incision, they did the transverse incision. They had a little bit of trouble locating the fetal head, so they did use a vacuum. There weren't any pop-offs, it was just one little pull and that was it. Usually with C-sections, they don't really use like vacuums and instruments and stuff like that, like forceps, but they did use for that. But everything was fine, baby came out and they cut the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord was like super long, which was really cool to see one in real life. And then I also saw the expulsion of the placenta, which was also super cool. I got to see all like the blood loss and the irrigation and the containers and that was interesting there was like a moderate amount of blood loss i'm trying to like remember everything they pretty much initiated skin to skin like as soon as they could the recess nurse suctioned the baby most times c-section babies are a little bit more mucousy because their lungs didn't have the process of labor to prep them to clear the fluids out of their lungs if that makes sense so basically just suctioned the baby and then handed baby off to mom and she was doing skin to skin it was great and then they were doing like the sutures and basically closing the mom up and like everything like that which actually was the longest part the actual delivery was like it took like three minutes in total with from the incision to getting everything open the vacuum and getting the baby out but the sutures definitely were the longest part of it all so yeah they started closing up mom and then after that we ended up going to PACU I went with the nurse and the patient and the baby of course and I went and I did the mom and baby assessment and then I did a vitamin K injection which was my first time giving an injection on a newborn after that the patient got admitted to the mother baby unit i think about an hour and a half to two hours post-op i really got to know this patient a lot got to know like a lot about like who they are where they're from their family life and it was really cool so yeah they got admitted to mother baby and then i went there and basically took on this patient as my own so did the necessary assessments and whatnot yeah that was basically it that was my labor and delivery experience it was really really fun and it was such a wonderful opportunity and i'm really thankful that i was able to go and see that for students at least in my school it's not really common for you to go into the or so the fact that i was able to even get that exposure is great and i never thought i would be somebody who would be in 
interested in labor and delivery but it's definitely something that is of interest to me now but that was basically my experience i'm gonna have another video coming out of my whole maternity ob clinical rotation experience so do be on the lookout for that i'll be covering a lot more in there about my experience on this clinical rotation but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload that's all for me and i'll see you guys in the next one